Welcome, Spartans, to Podcast Evolved, your home for Halo. This week, we're continuing our character dossier series with a look at key figures on the Infinity to include Lasky, Palmer, and Roland. Boo. Today, I am your host, Oren, and with me, we have Aaron. Hi, guys. And two other people who don't like Palmer, so we're not going to introduce them. Boo, Boo. Palmer, boo. Boo, Palmer, boo. Of course, I'm referring to David. Hi, everybody. And, you know, the girl. Boo! Krista. Yeah, that's me. But before we get started on that, if you're new to the show, welcome. This is Podcast Evolved. We uh, host a variety of shows. This is our main show. We talk news, we talk Halo lore, and we talk to you, the listener, during some live shows. We have uh, other shows called Mission Debrief, Halo Book Club, and Builds with Blocks. And you can find all the information about those shows on our website, halopodcastevolved.com. If you're already a fan of the show, we ask you to rate us and leave us a review. We greatly appreciate all the feedback that we receive from our listeners to improve the quality of our shows. If you're also interested in the Halo Championship Series or a fan of esports in general, check out HCS Pro Talk with Josh and Will. We just joined a partnership with them and their show. They discuss the latest information within the competitive Halo scene with an emphasis on community every single week. And you can find them on your favorite podcast feed today. We'd like to take a moment to thank our patrons for their continued support. Thank you guys so much. You guys do more than just leave the lights on. Uh, We've been able to branch out and just do more and more with the show, including things like this partnership with HCS Pro Talk, which is a very new development as of this recording. So thank you guys again so, so much. Thank you. Thanks, peeps. You're the best. Our patrons receive a variety of exclusive rewards, such as early episodes, unique swag, and access to our very own original soundtrack album that features 18 songs. And you can head over to patreon.com slash Halo Podcast Evolved to learn more. And finally, we encourage our listeners to support Audible, where they can enjoy the growing collection of all of the Halo novels all in one place, along with thousands of other novels, guidance as well as programs, and more. You can use the URL audibletrial.com slash podcast evolved to learn more and start your free trial today. A new book just came out with a very special voice actor who did the audiobook that I highly, highly, highly recommend that our listeners check out. Let's go ahead and pivot into our dossier. Um, I'll turn it over to Aaron to kind of introduce our topic, but like... Uh, the previous episode the this is our i think it'll be about a 10 part series that will focus on important characters from the halo universe and talk about their uh, service record and possible impact in halo infinite so take it away i am totally prepared as i frantically sweep through tabs someone has too many windows open right i gave (laughs) you some time with that beautiful intro I know, I'm here, I'm here, I'm totally here. I clicked on the wrong one again after I had it open. I've named this script the Heavy Hitters of Infinity because we are tackling the three biggies that we know of on the Infinity. We're going to be focusing on Lasky, Palmer, and Roland. Boo! Boo! Boo, Palmer, boo! I'm editing all of these out. I'm going to put... Happy grunt sound effects in every time I mention Palmer. <laughs> yeah, put put the Halo birthday party skull every time they say boo. That'd be great. It would sound like a regular matchmaking game. That'll not make things super duper hard. Boo Palmer. We have a little bit to cover here just before we start. Just a vague reminder of what the Infinity is, just in case you forgot. It's the ship that keeps getting blowed up in Halo but never dies. It crashes almost as much as a pelican. But it survives, that's the main thing. The UNSC Infinity is an experimental Infinity-class carrier of the UNSC Navy, built in secret, utilizing technology recovered from Forerunner and Covenant sources during the war. Infinity serves under the direction of Fleet Command and was originally captained by Andrew Del Rio. Boo. Boo. Yeah, he's a boo. Palmer's still a boo. And Thomas Lasky. Yay! Yay! She is the current designated flagship of the Expeditionary Strike Group 1 and serves as the ceremonial flagship of the United Nations Space Command. Before we continue, 
the Infinity is an experimental Infinity class su super character. Does that imply that there's another Infinity class super carrier, or is Infinity I'm just the only that, one? It kind of does imply it, but I say it's the one and only. No, there is a second one, but she's not actually active. They cleverly do this in the lore. The other Infinity class carrier is called the Eternity, I believe. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh good. What's longer, the Infinity or the Eternity? Halo Eternity. <laughs> She has been cannibalized for parts. The Infinity, if you remember back in, I believe it's Escalations, where the Infinity gets shot with a glassing cannon during an ambush. You know the issues where Lord Hood takes command and runs headlong into the ambush. And oh, yeah. Palmer saves the ship on her space bike. I believe that's when they change the ship. The Infinity changes design slightly from Halo 4 to Halo 5. And the lore is that they had to cannibalize parts from the Eternity to refit the Infinity and get her back into active service. But they, they were building a second Infinity-class ship. Interesting. Someday we might get a very similar scene to a certain Battlestar Galactica when the second Battlestar shows up. Ooh. Oh. That's a very good scene, and I think there's not the only thing better than one Infinity is two Infinities. True. First ship of her class, Infinity was secretly deployed in combat in March 2553, but wasn't officially commissioned until February 21st, 2557. By February 2558, Infinity had a crew of 17,151 sailors, marines, only operatives, and civilian personnel. Infinity also carries an escort force of 10 internally docked Analyst class frigates. The primary shipboard AI is Roland, having replaced the ship's former AI Anya, who was killed in the events of Halo 4 when Cortana had a hissy fit. <laughs> She's like, eh, die. The ship's motto is Udur es Bafakra? My Latin's terrible. Uh, to dare is to do. That's a brief rundown in Infinity. Infinity is a big ship. To date, the single best ship cutscene, I think, in Halo is the opening to Spartan Ops where yes. Infinity <laughs> runs over the Covenant and goes, fuck you, look at my frigates. It's a sexy scene. It's really good. I remember vaguely seeing, it was one of the documentaries for Halo 4, and some of the people were talking about to get the scale of Infinity. They were like, we want the Infinity to come in, we want the frigates to come out of Infinity, we want pelicans to launch from the frigates and take Spartans down to the surface. You can be like, ooh, it's big. <laughs> Oh, that's a big ship. It's a very big ship. I like the ship. It gets attacked a lot, but so far it has survived. But we will have to ponder that a little more at the end of this. The first obvious person to talk about is Thomas J. Lasky. Yay! What a guy. Woo! He is captain of the Infinity. He's not a bad looking lad. He's, he's a nice lad. We get some like intimate moments with him at the end of Halo 4 when he's tries to be friends with Chief, and Chief cold shoulders him. Aww. So, Lasky was born August 15th, 2510. He is about 50 at the time of Infinite. Oh, is he? Really? Damn, he looks good. good. Yeah, holy shit. He looks like in his 30s or 40s. He's a great 39 or 49. I'm guessing he spent a lot of cryo time because Johnson was kind of the same. Johnson was older than Hood, technically. <laughs> Well, actually, when you think about, like, okay, Lasky, you probably have it there in, in the notes, but, like, he, he doesn't do well in cryo. Oh, yeah, because, uh, we, yeah, we saw he gets the rash. Yeah, he's allergic to it, but he still puts himself through it because I think the Forward Under Dawn scene where Lasky's having, like, his Vietnam flashback while he listens to Cortana's message, like, he suits up at the end of that and goes into cryo. Yeah. He still does it anyway, so yeah, he's he's 50. But then again, I suppose all the blue team are about 50. They're all like 49, 50 as well. Ah, uh, yeah, but the Spartans are weird. You can't age, you know, take Spartans age into consideration comparing it to like, nor what do you call like, normal humans? <laughs> Normies. Lasky is about 30 in UNSC marine years, and those are different to regular human years. So that's how we'll work that. Okay. Lasky was born in Tricode Village, Mer Erythium on Mars. So he's a Martian is what you're saying. Yeah, he's an alien Martian man. Good for him. I know, he, he makes a good Martian. He is six foot tall, 169 pounds, nice. 
Brown her, <laughs> brown eyes. His rank is captain, and his service number is 986047269OTL, which is not as catchy as 117. No. <laughs> not quite. I have a bit of a rundown, similar to how we did it with Blue Team, of Lasky's major bits and pieces. Some of them we can discuss more than others because, quite frankly, some of them are a bit of a snooze and some of them are not. And a lot of this crosses with Palmer's history as well. So we like pick and mix here a little bit. First major point, like we said, Lasky was born on Mars. He was born to Colonel Audrey Lasky. She's not a very warm woman, as we find out in Forward Under Dawn. Dear Tom, your brother has died, but don't leave school for the funeral. It'll be fine. <laughs> I think is, yeah, the gist of what she says to him. He grew up on the city of New Harmony and he was friends with Petrogenic as a child. That will become relevant later. During the events of Forward Under Dawn, still probably one of the best live action Halo things, Lasky was undergoing officer training at Corbulo Academy. There's a few things we can cover. I think in 25, 25, 26 is when he joined around 2526 is when his brother was killed in action he was an ODST he dies fighting the insurrectionists he was 18 at the time which I didn't realise because the actor that plays Cadman Lasky looks like he's about 25 just cool yeah he is a bit older looking he's buff and chiselled and kind of attractive and glorious but he died yeah Tom spends the next several years replaying his video messages and playing chess with his uh, deceased brother and pre-listening to that horrible message from his very cold mother. He's not a nice lady. I'm surprised Lasky's as well adjusted as he is. We mentioned it earlier, during his time in Corbulo, Lasky is diagnosed with an allergy to, David help, cytoprethylene? Yeah, that's pretty good. I got cytoprethylene. That is the chemical used in cryo to stop damage to your cells when you freeze so he was given the option of a medical discharge he ponders his medical discharge because he's a little he's having a few insurrectionist sort of any sympathies he can see that it's not really the right course to go and fight them and maybe they should have their independence and a few things like that but before he has time to quit the UNSC the covenant attack and Blue Team are sent to the planet and we get a lovely awesome series of fights that ends in Chief performing his one and only Hunter assassination. Oh, so good. It really is. Lasky and three or two other cadets survive. Lasky's girlfriend does not survive. Boo. She has to go back to Narnia. <laughs> I forgot they were in, she was in that. Hmm. Thanks for reminding me the only thing I know her from. That pretty much covers the events of uh, Forward Under Dawn. It's good. Go give it a watch. Definitely worth it. Mm -hmm. The next thing in the timeline is he features in, there's a brief mention in Halo Escalation Volume or Issue 2 that Lasky is commissioned into the UNSC as a naval naval aviator flying fighter craft uh, Lasky is later retrained as a ship warfare officer during the Covenant's attack on Earth and the rest of the Soul System Lasky demonstrated notable skill in flying a Type 26 Banshee in Ankara Luna there's no details it's just a mentioned thing on a report I think between him and Petra discuss it yeah he, he fly good Banshee on the moon <laughs> random the next mention of Lasky, I think this is the first mention of Lasky, is in Thursday War. We're introduced to Lasky on board the Infinity. He is there to give Admiral Parangoski and Lord Hood the tour of the ship. And that's when we find out that Lasky was Parangoski's pick to be captain. But she had to relent and let Hood pick instead. So Hood picked Del Rio and Lasky becomes first officer. We next get some more Lasky stuff in Halo Initiation, and this is January 2553, and this is the fight where Ilse Zane tried to take the Infinity out of Dry Dock and steal it. Ilse Zane is OP crazy. She is a, 
a Spartan that doesn't need to wear armor. Jeez, all sorts of... If there was a over-the-top maniacal human villain for Halo, it's her. There's a big fight. The home team win is the short version of it. Palmer beats the shit out of her. We can mention it more later. She gets captured in the end. She gets dumped out into space. I think that's what happens to her, yeah. She gets dumped out into space but survives because she makes an appearance in Hunt the Truth down the line. So you can go and actually listen to the crazy lady if you want. So Lasky and Palmer teamed up to save the Infinity there. The next mention we have of Lasky is Thursday War Again in 2553 in March. Lord Hood and Margaret Parangoski take the Infinity for a joyride to Sanghelios to shoot big holes in the Arbiter's front garden. Yeah, they wreck shot. They do. They decide to go and wave their big toy around in front of the elites during their civil war under the guise of helping the Arbiter fight his battle with the servants of the Abiding Truth. So this is the bloodletting years which begins with this battle and ends with the events on uh, Sunayon in Halo 5 when he kills the last of the Covenant. That battle ran on for quite a few years, but this was when Lord Hood comes to help the Arbiter out because they're good buddies. And Parangoski gets in the way a little bit. She does Oni stuff. She does a lot of Oni stuff. She's good at the Oni stuff. She's a good choice of character because she picked Lasky, and that would be the right call in the end. Next up, events we're fairly familiar with is Halo 4 and that is June 21st to 23rd, 2557. We all kind of know the story of this one. I won't go into too much details of it. We first meet Lasky in Halo 4. He's with Palmer, where she introduces the I thought you'd be taller line. Boo! Boo! I was waiting to hear Krista unmute the mic to go boo. We should have saved that one for Palmer. No, we're booing through the every mention of Palmer's getting a boo. Oh, goodness gracious. Lasky's time spent on the main Halo 4 campaign is basically going, what the fuck, as Del Rio makes terrible decision after terrible decision. Notable points are when Del Rio shouts, Give me that chip. Lasky very slowly and half-heartedly extends his hand to take the chip out of the console and lets Master Chief do it instead. He, it's the laziest crab. It's just like, oh, maybe I'll get there and... <laughs> Yeah, he had no intentions, and then Chief leaves the ship, or gets ready to leave the ship to go and hunt the Didact, while Del Rio insists they go back to Earth to regroup, and Lasky appears in the uh, flight bay going, Oh, I ordered up this gunship to go and hunt you down, but if you were to take it... Hint, hint. That was a pretty cool moment, I like that. He is, I like Lasky sort of shows himself to be like a good character, he has good judgement. He's a G. He does what he can for Chief. He's like, here, look, we have a combat pelican fully equipped. Take it. Go do your thing. I'll do what I can for you. Well, Lasky seems to just completely trust Chief from the moment they meet, so... Well, this is... I, this goes back to the events of Forward Under Dawn where Chief rescued Lasky, so he, he owes Chief a debt. This is him getting a chance to repay it. The next time we see Lasky again in Halo 4, he has assumed command of the Infinity because Del Rio has been told to go fuck himself by Hood, because Hood's not very happy, because Hood is a very big fan of Chief. At this stage, Lasky is on the Infinity with home fleet in orbit around Earth, trying to stop Mantle's approach. Helps Chief by shooting a big old hole in Mantle's approach, and Chief gets inside the ship and would eventually go on to blow it up. At the end, then, Lasky has Chief rescued out of the debris field and they have that heart-to-heart -heart moment on the uh, observation deck overlooking Earth and Lasky, God love him, does his best to be a friend for Chief. I suppose Chief kind of opens up a little bit. He has that, she, she said that to me once. About being a machine. Like that, that's the closest Chief gets to being warm and fuzzy. Actually, Chief's also kind of funny with Lasky. Thinking back to the first time he meets Lasky in the jungle. Del Rio shouting about get the... Continue your mission, like, wasn't it? Lasky wants an evac for the injured people. Del Rio's like, get this done now. And he turns around to Chief and he's like, I, I hate to ask you, but... You really got to clear an LZ or something. Chief's like, 
uh, I have a little experience. And it's like, oh, Chief made it funny all by himself. That's the end of Halo 4. Chief be sad. We then see Lasky again in Spartan Ops. So we're not going to go through all of Spartan Ops because who wants to go through all of Spartan Ops? Boo, Spartan Ops. He's just in the cutscenes though, isn't he? Yeah, he's just kind of there. He doesn't do anything. Yeah, we get a couple of moments of Lasky. We get him on the bridge at the start when they crash out of slip space and have the big fight with the Covenant and fuck them up. We get Lasky fighting the Prometheans with his shotgun when they invade the ship, which is pretty good. He's there on and off. There's not a lot to say. The long and short version is this will end with Halsey escaping t- with Jewel and Oni ordering Palmer to go and assassinate Halsey once Osman realizes she's escaped. But Lasky can't bring himself to do it, so he sends Majestic Team to swoop in and cockblock Palmer. And that basically ends with Halsey losing an arm. Palmer being very pissed off and Lasky being able to live with himself. It was probably the right call given where we are now in Halo. We'd be an awful lot worse if he had have let Palmer shoot Lass or shoot. Oh my Halsey. god, if they if they killed off Halsey in Spartan Ops, I'd be so pissed off. I would be so angry. It would have been a dumb decision too, because Halsey's a huge just like she just continues the plot, basically. <laughs> Yeah. She drives the plot in many situations. Imagine relying on Glassman to save the universe. Ah. Uh, Instead of Halsey. What about Phyllis? Phyllis might be good. But he's not a scientist. He's like, yeah, he like studies like languages and stuff and culture. He knows a little bit of Forerunner with his time with BB. He does it. And he's, he is interesting in some ways, but like, you, yeah, Anders is the replacement in the wings. Well, Anders is sleepy time, so... They'll pull her in when they need her. At some point, Halsey will have to die because she's getting old. She doesn't have to die. Technically, Parangoski's like 10 billion years old, so... <laughs> That's true. Don't think age means much in Halo in general. They'll keep you along as much as they need you. Parangoski lives and is fueled by darkness and evil. Like, as long as there's evil in the universe, also she biscuits. will survive. Yes, gi- ginger nuts. Ginger nuts are the way to go. Ginger nuts. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> right. Next up, we have the Battle of Ialan, and that's Escalations, Volume 1 to 5. Lasky is ordered to take Lord Hood and the Arbiter to peace talks with the Gerald Hanna Chieftain Lytus. The Covenant attack the peace talks. Lasky and the Spartans have to evac. Lasky ha- has to order DeMarco. He's the cocky one from the start of Spartan Ops. He's the, I have command of a whole fire team. And Palmer like beats him down. But he has to like stay behind in an anti-air gun and defend Lasky and the rest of the dignitaries as they're evac by ship. He dies. That's basically the big beats from that. There's not much else to it really. The next thing this leads on to is... Mole Hunt in 2558 and this is issue 4 of Escalation and that is where Lasky teams up with Petra to try and figure out who leaked the details of the peace talks because Hood realises it had to be someone fairly high up in the ranks in the UNSC and it turns out to be Captain Daniel Clayton the illegitimate son of Captain Cutter oh no whoa And that will come back to be mentioned later in Palmer's side. Next up, we have the events of Halo 5. That's October 2558. There's not a huge amount to this. Uh, Lasky's kind of a cutscene character again, bit of a supporting role. He's there at the start. He sends Osiris to capture Halsey. He takes Halsey off to interrogate her. We see him again when he's on the bridge with Roland, having his little hissy fit and that weird cutscene that doesn't match up to anything and I think then <laughs> the next time we see Lasky is the end cutscene for Halo 5 which is pretty cool which is the infinity in orbit around Earth and Cortana's avatar suddenly appears on the bridge she has a little back and forth with Lasky and then a guardian appears so he does his Battlestar Galactica moment and slips bases out of the system just before the guardian EMPs earth and kills an awful lot of people in space hooray and the last real mention of lasky 
apart from one more after this. Halo Bad Blood 2558. Lasky picks up Osiris, Blue Team, and Halsey and Palmer from St. Helios. That's after the took you long enough cutscene at the end of Halo 5. Oh, I forgot that that's where Bad Blood picks up. And then he sends uh, Buck off to do a few bits and pieces. And then we briefly see Lasky again in Shadows of Reach because he's now bringing the reinforcements because the Infinity is kind of the only the only game in town now really when it comes to fighting Cortana. That's basically the last time we see Lasky is during the Shadows of Reach. Any thoughts? What do we think of Lasky? We like Lasky. Yeah, Lasky's a good dude. I think he's, he's a cool ship commander. He's a good relationship with Chief. I kind of like how he bounces in between other characters and even dealing, like he's got, there's some history there between him and Palmer, which I think is interesting. Oh, they're fucked. They've absolutely. Yeah, there's some stuff going on. I do like, I don't know, I like him. I like how he deals with all the different people. Palmer would crush Lasky. Maybe he likes that, Krista. Maybe <laughs> oh my <not>. god. <laughs> But there's so much sexual tension between the two of them, like it's constant. There's something there. I like how Lasky, when we see him in Halo 4, you can tell he's like biting his tongue a whole lot and he's just kind of doing what he's supposed to be doing, even though it's not what he feels like he should be doing. But then like pretty much immediately in the events that happen after Halo 4 and all the different mediums, like he really takes control of his new role as captain and is able to be himself to his fullest. You see a lot of that in the Spartan Ops cutscenes that he's in and the Halo 5 cutscenes. I don't know, it just makes him much stronger. And looking back at Halo 4 and even what he was doing in, in Forward Unto Dawn, like, you definitely had, like, a, a character with untapped potential that just hadn't unlocked it yet. He's a good dude. I like him a lot. He is. He also had the balls to talk to Osman on a Skype call and then immediately go behind her back and do something else. And that's a brave move. Going on from that, we've got Sarah Palmer. Boo! I know to wait now. Right, so, Palmer was born in April 13th, 2527. The worst day. (laughs) Oh my god. I wonder how much of this is going to make the final edit. I wonder how many, how you can edit around all this. Please, no, please, keep everything in. I can just mute their tracks. I can, like, Krista no! didn't talk at all during this episode. It's Palmer's amazing. stinky and we hate her. She's born April 13th, 2527, which I think makes her 33-ish at the time of Infinite. So she's kind of a baby compared to almost everyone else who's in their 50s. She was born on Luna. She is 6'9", 241 pounds, brown hair brown eyes she is a commander her service number is 56287-98303-sp you can leave your voicemails there for the next episode (laughs) (laughs) right kind of mild trivia palmer was one of the first spark four candidates after the failed ilsa zane experiment she is commanding officer of the 300 plus contingent of spartans aboard infinity Palmer was born to parents with a strong dislike and distrust of the UNSC, but they died when she was young and her adoptive father was influential in her signing up and joining the Marines, so I'm sure her parents would have loved that. Mm, That's kind of interesting. We get our earliest mention of Palmer is in Bad Blood, that is in 2546, and we meet a Lance Corporal Palmer who was attached to ODST squad Gamma 6. During the Covenant attack of uh, Sargasso, the squad was assigned to protect Lethbridge Industrials uh, facility in the town of Belisk. Look in a minute, I have an awful notion that's where one of our Spartans is from. Is that Fred? I might have to have a look in a minute in the old show notes. Is this like a flashback in Bad Blood? Because Bad Blood takes place after Halo 5. Or is this like a new blood? I'm pretty sure it's a flashback. Yeah, this is the if that's it's what I'm thinking. I think that's where the rookie ties in there. No, that's the first one. This is Buck basically remembering how he saved Palmer years ago. So this was the first one. Palmer's squad 
were being used as a diversion so that Alpha 9 could get into the facility, extract the research data and get out. And on the way out, Buck realises what's happening. There was a squad leader, they die, Palmer's taken over the squad, they're getting hammered, they're asking for evac, they're basically told no, so Buck goes and takes Alpha 9 and rescues them, but by the time he gets there, Palmer's the last man standing, so he evacs Palmer and saves her life. That's where that leaves off, and then that comes back later with the rookie. Next up we have Initiation Issue 1, that's October 2552. Palmer is part of an ODST unit deployed to reinforce a UNSC outpost under attack by the Covenant. Immediately upon touchdown, Palmer single-handedly defends Admiral Kovalik, who is escaping the outpost with the base's AI. Palmer fights off several Covenant forces, including no less than two brutes, one of which is a chieftain, which is an awful stretch for an ODST, I think. I like Palmer, but even that's pushing it a bit. It sounds slightly fan fiction-y. You're like going, and then Johnson, then Johnson killed the hunter with a knife. And you're like, no, that, that didn't happen. But she did it anyway. I don't know. I think they're trying to make her sound like a badass so then she can be more liked by the Halo community. They are. Wow, two Jiro Hornet. Even I'm sitting there going, that's a little bit much. But showing ingenuity and bravery in the face of insurmountable odds, including flipping a warthog with a grenade and eliminating a chieftain, Lance Corporal Palmer successfully rescued the Admiral and was subsequently promoted to the rank of Corporal. Yay! Good job. Boo! <laughs> oh, she's going places, she's going places. She's getting there. January 2553, following her promotion to Corporal, Palmer received medical care for her injuries sustained in the rescue of the Admiral aboard the Lockhart Medical Station where she was approached by June to become one of the first uh, Spartan Force. I think she initially like shoots him down but then changes her mind and decides to go for it. And that brings us on to Initiation Issue 3 which is Raid on the Infinity, we mentioned this earlier. Palmer's being transferred along with the other three of the first Spartan 4 recruits that are now fully augmented and as she boards the Infinity, Ilsa in with a group of insurrectionists all hiding as construction workers try to take over the ship, which is the single most well guarded hidden vessel in the universe, it's out in the Oort Cloud, the staff aren't allowed to go home, they live there for seven years when they build the ship and she managed to smuggle a whole load of people on board. That's hardcore. <laughs> There's a big fight. This is where Palmer gets her scout armor, and this begins a long sordid history of Palmer losing her helmet. <laughs> oh, I've heard about this. Ilsa Zane punches her so fucking hard with just her fist that she knocks her helmet off. Like, it took, it took the leader of the Banished and a gravity mace to do that in the other lore, but Ilsa Zane did it with just her fists. She's <laughs> incredibly overpowered. But yes, this starts the long history of Palmer not wearing her bloody helmet all the time. And it is a little bit ridiculous at some stages. Next up, we have the Draco 3 Rebellion, that's in 2554. During the resettlement of Draco 3, the United Rebel Front attacked the capital city of New Albany, in an attempt to take control of the planet. Several Spartan fours, including Palmer, were tasked with eliminating the insurrections throughout the city, while Alpha 9 was ordered to eliminate the URF Captain uh, Ingridson in the city's capital building. This did not go well. She was eventually assassinated, but not before she took out the rookie. Boo. Yes, this comes back to the battle earlier, because Palmer, now a Spartan, goes to have Buck's back and return the favour from him saving her back in the day because Buck and Alpha 9 are slowly being outnumbered. The rookie tried to sneak round back and take out Gritson and it didn't go well. He gets captured. Like I said, he eventually gets whacked and then Alpha 9 managed to take out Ingridson, but we get a very sad Buck. I don't like sad Buck, but Palmer does her bit anyway, holds off the rebel forces and saves Alpha 9. Next up we have the Battle of Drathus 5 and that will be, we're not going to go too into this, there is a mission debrief on this because this is the events of a Spartan Assault. 
This is Spartan Polymer and Davis. They are on X-50, which is a moon, which actually turns out to be a space station. What is it? It's a forerunner world-building machine, isn't it? Yeah, it's weird. That game's weird. <laughs> the short version is Polymer survives by going to Drathus. She warns the civilians that the Covenant are attacking. Davis gets killed and converted into a forerunner homing beacon, which is weird. Yeah, it's it's weird. The story in that game is weird. Yeah, Palmer murders everyone on the moon and eventually goes back to rescue Davis's remains. There's not much else to really say about that, other than you maybe don't want to be a teammate with Palmer if the shit hits the fan. Yeah, you'd get turned into a Forerunner artifact, yeah. Yeah, not great. Next up, we have the Halo 4 campaign, July 2557. I thought you'd be taller. No one likes that line, but I thought it was delivered with a little bit of lightheartedness. Everyone else thinks she was an insult. She's not a lighthearted person, that's the thing. No, she is. She smiles when she does it. I thought you'd be taller. You think to hear some people, she walked up to Chief and smacked him across the face with a gravity hammer and went, I thought you'd be taller, bitch. That's kind of what she does. That's true. Chief has tougher feelings than that. Chief has no feelings. Chief doesn't give a fuck about her. He, He just sees her as another just Spartan, just like there. Chief's not even the sassy sort. Like, if he, if that was Johnson, you know fine rightly there would be a, I'm sorry, you are. Chief's not that sort of boy. He's a good boy. He doesn't do that. Next up, there's no real point. Polymer doesn't feature a huge amount in Halo 4, so... She's ordered to arrest Chief and take, as well, and take that AI into custody by Del Rio. She doesn't even move. That's one thing I appreciate about her. Like, she just stands there, again, with no helmet because apparently she just never wears the bloody thing. That's why she just stands there, because she's like, I don't have my helmet, what am I supposed to do? Next up, we see Palmer in Spartan Ops, that is uh, February 2558. This starts the very long trend of Palmer bullying scientists for being nerds. Yeah, great (laughs) redeeming character, very good qualities. Yeah, in her opening pep talk in the like Spartan armor bay on the Infinity, she's like, the eggheads want to go and study this planet, so we've got to go and secure it. And you're like, oh, for God's sake. And it just goes from there the whole way through. Like we said, she eventually is ordered to murder Halsey by Oni. She fails, but not before costing Halsey her arm. She's very anti-Halsey too. She takes Halsey's thing like very personally. This runs for a while where she's very angry with Halsey and then she just, like, buries the hatchet. She just gives up. Pretty much, yeah. We have the Battle of Elan 4, and that's Escalation Issue 1. That's March 5th, 2558. Palmer provides security for the peace talks where uh, DeMarco is killed. The big thing that happens in this is Palmer takes out a lich with her helmet stuffed full of grenades because... Why do you need a helmet? Well, it's already off, so, you know, throw it at a dude. I know, yeah, fill it full of grenades, throw it at a ship, make it explode. I suppose it's a tactic. It worked. She saves them. Next up, we have the ambush at Oathloden, March 2558. This is when Captain Daniel Clayton, the illegitimate son of Captain Cutter, lures the Infinity into an ambush because Lord Hood's a prat. Palmer eventually saves the day on her uh, space bike with a few other Spartans because the Infinity gets shot with a glassing cannon. There's a whole big thing. It was quite a good story only in the arc because it teases the eventual return of the Spirit of Fire because we got that. Remember back in the day we got that little glass set of panels with the flood spore going through the Spirit's oh, cryo bay. Yeah. Oh, that was good. That's the very end of that. The short version of this is the Infinity is attacked by a freighter equipped with a load of like fighters and I think a couple of vultures that turn out to be from the Spirit of Fire. And then Lord Hood, basically, back in the day, he fucked up the retrieval of the black box that Cutter launches from the Spirit of Fire, telling them telling the UNSC where they went. No one knows where the Spirit of Fire went, so they could never follow it. 
uh, Hood takes it upon himself to look after Cutter's wife, Cutter's legitimate children and Cutter's illegitimate son and he decides that he never gained his position in the UNSC on his own merit and it was all Hood's doing so he devises this plot to take out the Infinity and kill Hood but doesn't succeed. What a rational course of logic. Yeah, there's a whole lot going on there. It's maybe for the best that Cutter's somewhere else and doesn't have to beat the living snot out of his son. Cutter's the kind of guy that would do it too. Yeah, it would have been a great cutscene. We saw him do like a happy speech in Halo Wars 2. I want the you're a piece of shit speech. I'm disappointed in you as blood flies across the bulkheads as he punches him repeatedly That. <laughs> I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. <laughs> Next up, we have Operation Whistle Stop. This is Escalation Issue 12, May 10th, 2558. Captain Lasky consults with Palmer about a situation unfolding on Ven 3. Infinity has lost contact with Spartans Ray and Thorn, who have been sent on a mission to capture a Sangheili in possession of a new biological weapon. Palmer and Roland talk Lasky into deploying a Spartan fire team to rescue them. This is the it's actually quite a good issue of Escalation where they invade the pirate base and Infinity eventually joins them. It's it's a pretty good little arc. Things happen, Polymer saves the day with Majestic once again, and it looks at the very end as if Oni set up the Infinity to take out the pirate stronghold for them, and that the bioweapon was a trick that didn't really exist all along. Yay! Next up we have the escalation issues of comic that go nowhere and change absolutely nothing in the Halo universe and really upset me. We have the Janus Key Conflict, July 16th, 2558. The long and short version of this is, Palmer and the Spartans lose the half of the Janus Key they have from Spartan Ops. Jewel and Halsey have the other half. Palmer has the chance to get the key back but decides to wait because Halsey's coming to collect it and she wants another shot at Halsey. Palmer fucks it up again because <laughs> the, what, what do we call the big mining covenant thing? What was that big mining drill? The harvester? Is it a harvester? The harvester, yep. She tries to take a harvester on in like hand-to-hand -hand combat. <laughs> she loses both halves of the key, Halsey escapes, Palmer starts to soften a little bit on the Halsey situation. Next up we have the absolute record. Yet another story arc that goes nowhere and changes nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it is such a shame. It was such a cool setup. Because the absolute record is so fucking cool. Loads of potential, all of it wasted, and very unbelievable events happen in this. Namely Halsey hacking a contender class AI. But anyway. Yeah. There's just a lot of things wrong with Escalation. Uh, <laughs> like, not so much Halsey. It especially soured me on it because I think me and David did this issue by issue. And waiting each week for another issue that did nothing was really upsetting. Right, this was September 15th, 2558. Palmer leads a team made up of herself... Thorn, Tanaka, and Glassman, and the Sangheili spy Ait Sev. Uh, they infiltrate J Jules Fleet and hitch a ride to the Absolute Record. There's a little bit of infighting going on between Jules and some of his other captains. As I have noted here, nothing actually happens in this story, except Palmer learns how to live with Halsey having once again escaped. <laughs> Learning to live with your failures. Yes, she got there in the end. Next up we have Halo 5. There's not a lot in this. We see Palmer at the start along with Lasky, Lasky on the video screen. And the only time Palmer really does anything in this is during the end cutscene on Sinaion. Or at Sinaion. Where she picks Osiris up in a pelican with Halsey and drops them onto the top of the Guardian. Once again, she's not wearing her fucking helmet. <laughs> S 
someone needs to strap it to her shoulders because at the end of Halo 5 when we see Polymer again she's beat to fuck and her head's covered in bruises. Do you know how they would have stopped the bruises? A helmet. They should just gorilla glue the helmet on. Yes, I hear that works really well. Yeah. We should maybe try that. Or just use those latches from like a pelican case. Just strap it to her shoulders. Yeah, and maybe put the clip around the back somewhere where she can't quite reach it. So she can't take it off. There's not a lot to this. Polymer doesn't play a big part in the game, really. That's her biggest cutscene. There's not much else. Next up, we have some more bad blood. That is 2558. Short version of that is it's Polymer, Halsey, Blue Team and Osiris evacing back to the Infinity after the whole big reunion on Sinaion. Or, eh... Uh, Sang Helios. I don't know why I wrote Sinai on there. Then we have Operation Wolf, which is the big battle in Shadows of Reach. That is October 7th, 2559. And that is Palmer and the Infinity Spartans uh, riding into the rescue as the cavalry to reinforce Blue Team and the militia while they're trying to defend against the Banished. It's a good big battle. Lots of shit happening. Lots of Spartans. They save the day. I kind of picture a um, tip of the spear type of a moment, except a bunch of Spartans when I was reading it anyway. It was a cool moment. It's a good battle, and any big battle with lots of Spartans is always nice to see. And that's basically the last time we see Palmer in the current timeline. Yay! I hate to ask, thoughts on Palmer, Oren? I think Palmer is just underdeveloped. I feel like there has been a lot of effort to make her likable and and you know worthy of attention. And sometimes it hits well, and other times it just didn't hit well. And I feel like that's just poor writing. I don't think she's a bad Spartan, but she's definitely not a very interesting Yeah, they Spartan. have her pegged as this kind of generic soldier that just always follows the rules, even to the letter. Do you know what I mean? They've, they've given her a little bit of a boring role. And they also try to throw in her as, like, the kind of, like, cocky badass as well. Like, I'm here to be in charge of you guys, but I can also do all this amazing stuff that you can do. So there's, there's definitely a chip on her shoulder. For sure. I mean, like, they have invested a lot into her. Obviously, Jennifer Hale is a big voice actress, so they've put obviously they've pulled out the big guns. And like when, you, like we said, like just look at her record, look at her Halo PD page. I mean, she's been involved in so many things, and that in like front and center of the Halo, like they've put comic books, they've put her into like s- stories, they've pulled her into the game. She's in cutscenes, she's in. They've invested so heavily in her, but like, it, I'm not even sure where it goes. Like, I mean, they're trying too hard. Maybe a little bit, yeah. She's a commander of 300 Spartans. Like, she's in a very important position. And, like, there's obviously she has to be involved in some way of Halo Infinite. Do you know what I mean? Like, anything involved in Infinity, since that's, like, her base of operations. And she's in charge of all the Spartans on the Infinity. She is such a core character in Halo. I feel like they've tried to make her a thing for so long, and that's why she's in so much stuff. But they just struggle to hit the tone with her all the time. It feels like they wanted her to be a kind of Sergeant Johnson style character, has a bit of a sense of humour, but at the end of the day is the badass soldier that will get shit done. But they just keep getting the character wrong, and then you've got, let's go protect the eggheads. Palmer should be more like Jerome, in the sense of just like, I'm here to do what needs to be done, and I'm going to command whoever is under me. That's kind of what I feel like the Palmer of, I don't know how to word this, but just like if, if, if we were to try again with Palmer, like maybe tone down her egghead badassery and just kind of double down on her just like tactical knowledge to command all these Spartans because there's definitely logistical knowledge and all that kind of stuff and, and militaristic knowledge that you would need to hold the type of role. And I just feel like we haven't just quite gotten that. And I'm sure, you know, I can picture it being kind of amazing in in Shadows of Reach, but it hasn't really translated in the games and stuff. Hopefully they'll hit the right tone one of these days. Right. We have one more character to cover. There's not a huge amount to cover with this character, so it shouldn't take long. Namely, Roland. Yay, we like him. Yeah, I like Roland too. 
Roland was commissioned on December 5th, 2557, so by the time of Halo 5, or like Spartan Ops and Halo 5, Ronan, or Roland's a baby. He's not very old at all. He has no homeworld, obviously, because he's programmed. Physical traits, which I think is slightly funny for an AI. He, his avatar is a World War II fighter pilot. Now, Halopedia made this claim with a reference to a link to, Wik or to Waypoint that, for a page that no longer exists, so I can't verify this. But Halopedia says his character model is based on the real-life World War II pilot Roland Beaumont, who was British RAF pilot. I believe he has the distinction of being the first British pilot to fly a warplane at Mach 1 and Mach 2. He flew 500 missions during World War II, I think, as well. If you look at his Wikipedia article, he his first photograph does very much sum up Roland. Also, for some reason, Roland is orange. I don't know why. He has no colour, and I thought maybe it was like a weird choice in projector, but then we get to Halo Wars and find out that no, you can't have a full colour AI, so I don't know why he's orange, but he is. His functionality, he is ship AI for the Infinity. He is the Infinity. His service number is RLD0205-4. One little bit of trivia. Despite the 20th century appearance of his avatar, Roland's name bears a tangential connection to the mythology behind the naming of Cortana. Roland is a figure in medieval legend with a sword named a uh, Durandal. Cortana is named after Cortana, the sword of... Ogier, the Dane, uh, which bore the inscription, my name is Cortana, of the same steel and temper as Jayuse and Durandil. Durandil in turn served as the namesake of the principal AI character in Bungie's Marathon series. I'm pretty sure we've covered that poem before. It's a lot of deep Bungie lore into some of their names and some of their, their cross. It's kind of like Easter eggs that they put across their games. It kind of gives me a vibe that maybe they looked for a famous Roland of history to model a Roland AI on, and that's what we got, so, which would make sense. There are three, uh, four kind of main points for Roland throughout his history, because he's kind of always there in the background. The first one is Iona's Trial, and that's in Saint's Testimony, so that's January 17th, 2558. This is when BB and Roland are conducting like a simulated trial because Iona is due to be de terminated and she has appealed it to the UN court. So they conduct this trial. The end version is they put Iona into stasis. It's all kind of been a lie, although they're conducting the trial so that researchers and alike can study it. But Iona never actually had a chance, I think, to get her freedom from it. Roland kind of has like an attack of conscience at the end of it, and BB says, No, like, I hope this trial is an important step on the road to humans and AIs becoming equal. Roland is a very, he's a very conscientious AI. Like, he's big and, like, you can see, like, he's very much, like, troubled by his morality. I find that quite, quite interesting. He's such, like, a good guy, good guy AI. It explains why Lasky picked him, because the ship captain picks his AI from the choice available, and you could see why Lasky would be drawn to an AI very much like him. The next time we see Roland is in Spartan Ops, that is the Requiem campaign, February 2558. He doesn't feature at all in Halo 4's campaign because he wasn't in service yet on the Infinity. Biggest moment is when he gets hacked by Halsey during Spartan Ops. She uses the little code phrase undead iridium and Roland like locks up and freezes and becomes a very obedient servant. But he eventually like undoes it, which is funny because he has like this mime moment where he kind of climbs out of himself and then tells his like sort of like quiet obedient self to fuck off <laughs> and then recovers completely. So that's probably his like biggest moment in that. He's in Halo 5, uh, I mentioned it earlier. He has the weird cutscene. This is a chunk, what feels like a chunk of a cutscene cut out of context. They're in like the ops room of the Infinity. We have Halsey, Palmer, 
and Lasky talking about Cortana and poor Roland standing on the display table going like, hang on, Cortana's alive? How, how did this work out and all the rest? And they're talking over the top of them. They're not paying any attention. And Roland ends up having to raise his voice and shout. And Lasky's like, you're out of line. And Roland, it's the closest Roland comes to being like sassy and shouting back. And he's like, hang on, everyone else is out of line as well. And he gets very annoyed asking like why does Cortana have to die because she didn't die when she was supposed to you can see like a touch of he's sympathetic to Cortana at this stage but that is before Cortana's call to arms for the created and then we have Roland is still on the infinity at the end of Halo 5 so he didn't go with Cortana you didn't say that like the the cutscene just like ends it's like so weird because it has this big emotional buildup, and then like as Roland is like saying the last syllable, it just starts to fade to black, and you're like, "Wait, what? <laughs> like, not even a linger on that shot?" No, and it also starts out of nowhere because they kind of like roll into they're already there. It's the weirdest disjointed thing. You can tell there was something else was supposed to be there, and it didn't make the cut. There's probably a story there, an AI side of the story of Halo 5 because we're a very interesting period especially for AIs where, where the Halo 5 story goes. It makes sense that they would have like maybe tried to build Roland as more of a character and shown him in contrast to Cortana of like a, uh, you know an AI that stays loyal and then the AI that defects and then it's kind of like an interesting thing around obviously the big thing that Cortana has over the AI is, is I can cure rampancy come to me and you don't have to die. So obviously that's very alluring to them. So I, I figured there's a story there that just never really got fully expressed in the game. Yeah, maybe someday we'll hear what happened, but we will see. The last major sort of like feature for Roland again is in Bad Blood in 2558. Roland performs Buck and Durr's wedding ceremony in the bar. Buck's like, hang on, can you perform a wedding? He's like, hang on a minute, I'm the ship. There's no one else other than the captain. Like, I, I am the infinity. I can do this. He performs the wedding ceremony. They mention how Buck has a lot of respect for Roland because Roland sided with humanity and didn't go with Cortana. That was obviously a conversation at some point. And that's kind of it. We don't really see much more of Roland. He features here and there, but he's one of these characters on the side all the time. I think he even leads one of the missions, doesn't he narrate one of the Spartan Ops missions? He's like the... He's your go-to voice in the corner at one stage, but I don't it's remember. hard to remember because Spartan Ops. This leads us on to our big question because we're running long, so we need to wrap this up. Do we think Infinity and her crew will feature much or at all in Infinite? Or are they all dead like the cutscene that we've seen so far seems to suggest? I don't think they're dead. I think they're all gonna be there. They have to be, right? Infinity is like all we really have in the UNSC at the moment. It's too big to, to just like write off. And especially with some of these characters. I mean, any of these characters could be easily written off. Okay, that's fair enough. But like the ship itself, I don't think so. Because without it, what have we got? Humanity's got nothing. So we kind of need it in there just to keep humanity in the game. Yeah, the Infinity is kind of the mobile humanity hub traveling through space and I imagine it might be a moment similar to Halo 4 where Chief's just on Requiem and the Infinity just kind of starts hailing him to where Chief's going to be on Installation 07 and he'll do his Chief things and eventually draw the Infinity to him or the Infinity will be drawn to the Halo and that's kind of how we'll see the return as some form of rebuilding takes place for humanity. That's my take anyway. So yeah, all these characters will still be here. Roland's still young. He seems to oppose Cortana and and him and other AIs seem like a good force to combat her. And we already know Hall's... I mean, they're already around because we saw him a year before Infinite takes place in Shadows of Reach. So they're just... They're, they're hopping around. They're avoiding contact. Yeah, I can see... I think they won't let us know that they've survived straight away, but I can see it very much being a case of Infinity just had to go on the run again. And a lot of those ships that are tagged with the Infinity call sign in that cutscene of all the dead ships in space on the map 
are probably escorts and things like that and they'll play on that for a while that did they didn't they but like you said I think they'll have to be back it is it's all humanity have there's nothing else unless they're going to whip out eternity then we're going to have <laughs> eternity then we need the infinity and I don't think they'll kill off Lasky because they have a good solid character with him they have a good solid character with Roland and they can fix Palmer if they want to but a part of me thinks they may have given up on trying to push her because it's just been a lot of failed attempts and I'm not sure how many times you go back to the drawing board with her but equally I don't think they'll kill her off I don't think Palmer's a character that you just kill like that so I could see them being back maybe post campaign kind of like Spartan Ops they may make another appearance quest givers that sort of thing but we will have to see any final thoughts from everyone on Team Infinity Boo Palmer boo <laughs> Boo Palmer yay Lasky I think Lasky's cool I want to see him back again I think him and Roland and stuff I think I think we will I don't know how big Infinity will be for the main campaign of infinite but it's got to be there at the beginning right so there's got to be that big fight it's got to be that big moment and then maybe it is chief building back some kind of resistance getting some kind of message out to infinity to say we're survivors we're here come back and get us or something or who knows but like i think i think we'll see infinity in the same kind of role as it was in halo 5 i think the majority of the game probably won't be involving those characters but they'll be there for supporting for chief yeah, I, I, f- I feel like it'll almost handle similar to like Spartan Ops to where and the Infinity won't won't be present that much during the Infinite main campaign. But if this is going to be the next the next 10 years of Halo, then I feel like they're going to be part of that rebuilding effort to where they'll they'll enter the picture at some point And then they'll be they'll have a presence in a supporting way to kind of you know support Chief and everything else going on in the ring and the galaxy, much like they did for what was it fire team majestic in uh spartan ops we will see like i said we've seen nothing really of the infinity yet apart from that uh, holographic display so hopefully we get some more information soon right our next character dossier which will be in a few weeks time we will be covering sarah osman and black box oh yeah yay Black Box is one of my favourite characters in all of Halo. He is fantastic. He is sarcastic. He is awesome. He is also a blue box, which is very important. (laughs) (laughs) He's not a black box, he's blue. He is a blue. We will will be covering those in our next dossier. I will hand it back over to Oren to bring us home. Yes, so thank you guys very much for joining us. Again, this is our character dossier lore series forgot to mention but episode one was about blue team or, or three members of blue team minus the master chief so if you missed that one you could scroll down your podcast feed or check it out on youtube and like aaron mentioned we have saren osman and black box the oni side of the humanity forces going into infinite for next time like we mentioned at the top of the show, you can find every single one of our episodes for this show and our other shows on our website, halopodcastevolve.com. And you can search for each podcast show's unique feed if you'd rather subscribe to that instead of the main show feed that has every episode that we produce. Uh, once again, another shout out to our patrons for their support for the show and making all of this possible. If you're not a patron and want to learn more, head over to patreon.com slash halopodcastevolve.com to learn more and finally if you want to leave us a voicemail about this episode or a previous episode or anything halo related for that matter you can give us a call at 205 evolved which is 205-386-5833 and with that i've been your host oren and until next time everybody evolve evolve, evolve.